Hello, Reefy Peachy here, and you're watching Coles Plants Fish, a channel dedicated to the fish keeping and aquarium hobby, specialising in saltwater reef, freshwater planted nature aquariums, and a variety of other fishy projects. So if you love aquariums and fish keeping as much as I do, then make sure to subscribe, comment and like to Coles Plants Fish for more videos just like this one. This video provides an update on the Cade 600 Pro Reef Aquarium's journey over the first six months. We can see how the tank transforms as we add corals and fish to the system. It's important to note the transition is a slow one. We are only adding easy to care for corals to the system as the system is far from established and stable. The soft corals and large stony polyps I have chosen are hardy enough to cope with the shift and swings and stability as the system slowly matures. Over the six months, I have dealt with cyanobacteria and algae outbreaks, very typical of cycling a reef tank. But with diligent maintenance, I've been able to keep the outbreaks under control and as the aquarium ages, so does the maturity and capability of the system's biological filtration. And with time, it's becoming more stable and easier to control. It will be at least 12 months before I begin to add small stony polyp corals to the system and my favourite fish, the mandarin goby. I have gone with very easy to care for corals. Forgive me as I can't name them all. We have very easy to care for and grow green star polyps growing on the back wall. Two varieties of Duncan corals. One from our East Australian reef, the other from the West. A variety of weather corals of different coloured polyps and shapes. Some green mushroom corals. An elegance coral. A torch coral. And some plating corals. Finally, a few zoa colonies. All of these corals are easy to care for. They can survive without feeding if the lighting is adequate to support the algae living in their tissue. This will provide them a food source, however, they will thrive if allowed to feed. Stocking consists of one very shy flame goby dartfish, one yellow bellied damselfish, Fiji blue devilfish, one clown goby whom has declared himself Lord of the Reef, and a pair of Picasso clownfish. Invertebrates are a coral banded shrimp, a few hermit crabs, a sand sifting starfish, a red starfish, and a variety of snails. Maintenance consists of emptying and cleaning the skimmer cup every few days, changing the reactor media every few weeks, and a 10% weekly water change. Dosing has been practically not needed. Apart from small adjustments to alkalinity, I have only had to dose magnesium and calcium twice over the last six months. However, I expect the demand to increase as I add more stony corals to the system. The future of the aquarium is to slowly increase the coral diversity and to begin to add the first few hardy varieties of small stony polyp corals to the system as it becomes increasingly more stable. In conclusion, the last reef tank I had was nearly 20 years ago, and it was even possible to keep a reef back then, although somewhat more difficult. Today, with the advancements in reef keeping, technology and husbandry techniques pioneered by those before us, I would like to dispel the myth that a saltwater aquarium is difficult to keep. In some ways, I find my reef easier to care for than my freshwater planted nature aquarium. My point is, this is a fascinating hobby, and if you have been sitting on the fence dreaming about dipping your toes into the saltwater aquarium hobby, I say jump on in. Start simple and enjoy the most fascinating aspect of the aquarium hobby, reefing. If you liked this video, then comment, like and subscribe to Coral's Plants Fish. I really appreciate your support. See you on the next one and cheers to happy healthy fish.